Hey there, YouTube. Barnard Racing here. So a little while ago, I got myself an X-Carve CNC computer-controlled router. And ever since I got it, I've been using it non-stop. It turns out that the X-Carve is a really very useful tool. And it's useful not only for just cutting metal, which is my normal idiom, but I've also discovered that I have plenty of uses for it in wood. And working with wood is new to me. I'm not really a wood guy. So as I work with wood more often, I'm learning a lot more about how one works with material. And one of the things that I have learned is that when you work with wood, you generate an absolutely enormous amount of dust and chips, much more than you generate when you work with metal. Sure, cutting metal generates chips, but what cutting metal doesn't do, unless you are grinding, is generate the dust that cutting wood does. So what I need to do is figure out a way to collect the dust coming off the X-Carve. So I did a whole bunch of homework, including reading up on this website by a gentleman by the name of Bill Pence, who is apparently the expert on dust collection and the dangers of wood dust. And it turns out that your typical shop vac based solution isn't good enough. What you need is a proper dust extractor. When you go out on the market and you look to find yourself a dust extractor, you very quickly find that most of the ones you can get in North America are all variations on the same Chinese model. Everybody goes to the same Chinese factory and buys more or less the same equipment specified to whatever specification their buyer wants to do. King Canada has one, Harbor Freight has one, Busy Bee Craft X has one, Grizzly has one, and so on and so forth. They're all the same guys buying from the same place. And it's the differences in the configuration that I find really very interesting. Given that they're all coming from the same place, what makes one better than the other? So what I've got for you today is that I bought myself a King Canada 120 volt dust extractor and I've since had an opportunity to look at its impeller and purchase an impeller from a different model from a different company and what we're going to do today is test how this change of the size of impeller changes the performance of the dust extractor. So what we're going to do is use this airflow meter in cubic feet per minute mode. What this allows you to do is you can set inside the machine the area of the duct you're going to measure, which in this case is this one here that hooks up to the dust boot, and it will read CFM directly. We're going to do a before and after from this one, and also one that's the unrestricted flow from a six inch hose, which means I have to reset the, the area in it. So let's just go ahead and turn on the, the dust extractor, and we'll see what it reads. So here we can see the size difference between the two rotors with the OEM one on the left and the Rikon replacement on the right. The veins curve in a different direction, but that turns out to make not much of a difference. It's the actual size of the rotor that, will, that should make the difference in airflow. So let's bolt it on and see. All right, with the new impeller in place, let's go ahead and fire this up and see what the difference in airflow is. And here's where we get our traditional visit from Murphy of Murphy's Law. That larger impeller 
is a clear win when it comes to flow at the dust hose that I attach to the dust boot on the spindle of the X-Carve. That's 34% more flow. That's going to pick up a whole lot more dust. That's a win. Unfortunately, when you look at the spec of the motor that it, as it comes installed from the factory, the amperage draw on the motor when it's in 120 volt mode is 12 amps. And when you attach the larger impeller, you push the amp draw up because now it takes more power to push the impeller to the point where I can no longer run that on the 15 amp circuit in the garage. It keeps popping breakers. I can get away with a airflow test, but as soon as I put any sort of load on it, pop it goes. The good news for me is that I have 240 volt service inside the garage and that motor is convertible to 240 volts. Put it on 240 volts, it draws half the amperage and that's a 30 amp circuit. So in order for me to make this larger impeller work, I'm going to have to convert the motor to 240 volts, which thankfully it's designed to do. So it's a win, just not a win just yet. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Let me grab my Peter. Woo!